Okay. <laughs> we'll see if we're still here. <laughs> okay, it's uh it's recording and it should be working. So ready to go? Ready to go. All right, it's nine o'clock and I'll call the meeting to order. Uh, this meeting and all other meetings of this committee are open to the public. Proper notice has been posted and given to the media in accordance with Wisconsin statutes so that the citizenry may be aware of the time, place, and agenda of this meeting. Uh, roll call shows we're all here except for Jake. And we need to uh, review and approve the agenda. I think we have a couple of changes. <laughs> we'll have to do... Uh, well, first, uh, the fairground, um, where is that one, number six? Number six. Uh, number six, uh, we don't think Rich is gonna be here, so we'll have to uh, scratch that one. And then, number seven. Number seven, uh, that gentleman's gonna be a little late, so we'll put that uh, down at the end before we adjourn. Hopefully he shows up in time. So we need a, Motion for approval of the amended agenda. Make a motion to approve the amended agenda. No second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? No. That passes. Now we're looking for a motion to approve the minutes of our previous meeting on February 7th. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from February 7th. Um, looking for a second. No second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? That passes. Any public comment? I don't have public comment, but I do have a correspondence I was going to mention here. Or it's um, we got a letter from uh, Justin Grabinski from Chesterland, Ohio. Um, sent us a Form saying he wants to buy Camp Victory for $9,516.32. So we, all we got to do is sign this paper and they'll get us a certified check in no time. <laughs> so, how many acres? I, how many acres <laughs> I know. Well, he, he's got it listed as nine acres. So I don't know where he's getting his information, but um, yeah, I just thought that was kind of interesting. And, um, Kind of wonder where stuff like this comes from, but uh, well, I don't know if you have to contact them back with a no. <laughs> yeah, you just don't sign the form, but I think we'll just let that uh, go away. <laughs> but uh, for entertainment value, thought I'd bring it to you. <laughs> Maybe in a month or two, he'll get a hold of us and be all mad because we didn't respond. But um, so maybe you forgot some zeros in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was that. Um, I have no other correspondence other than regarding stuff that's on the agenda. So uh, that'll take us down to number eight, fairground murals. Okay. And that's the other correspondence I have is uh, uh, Mary Jane Bayman uh, emailed me yesterday afternoon. Um, she is with the Wyawiga Historical Society. Uh, what this is all about is they had uh, asked me if. Uh, because it's the 150th anniversary of the fair this year, they were wondering if they couldn't do some sort of artwork or mural or something out there to the fairgrounds on a building or or something. And I had kind of suggested that maybe we could do something where, you know, groups paint sheets of plywood or something kind of like 4-H kids do for the fair signs, you know, just so it could be put up and then, you know, eventually taken down somewhere you know um the uh one thing I, I told her I was concerned about with doing a mural on one of the buildings is maintenance of said mural um and the city why we has that big silo cool looking but you know like it needs to be repainted or something and it's going to cost buku bucks to do that you know I don't want to really have that maintenance issue at the fairgrounds if I can help it um and so she said she was going to approach uh, these different groups, give them the opportunity to uh, submit ideas. 
So I didn't really want to approve something until seeing what they were actually going to submit. So she sent out an email to a bunch of different groups that are involved with various things um, and said that they had to have their ideas to her, actually to me by March 31st, uh, to bring to this park committee meeting to discuss um, if we were going to allow whatever or not. I didn't get any responses from anybody other than her saying um, that she can't be at this meeting um, because of the election. She helps as a poll worker or whatever. So she said if there's any questions, um, we can relay those to her. Uh, like I say, I haven't heard anything back from anybody as far as we want to do this. Uh, I guess if if we do hear something, I would like to bring it to you guys before I prove it, um, unless it's something small, whatever, I don't know. But um, the original idea was to paint a mural on one of the older buildings out there as the 150 thing, which would be like the maintenance building, which is kind of, you know, <clears throat> could be done. Um, uh, did you want to say anything about the um, New London deal? Yeah, I don't know if that lady reached out to the Wolf River Art League, mm -hmm. but they, the idea they were kicking around uh, was they uh, do a mural on a panel like that um, during the fair so that people can see it develop and, and how it's done, and then we could uh, hang it up after the fair. So it's sort of... Uh, advertisement for them because they're the ones that did all the murals in New London. And, and like John said, upkeep <laughs> can get costly, but their group uh, raises funds and then they go out and they touch up the murals when they need it and stuff like that. So um, I told them we'd find a spot for them if they decide to do that or not. I don't know when their next meeting is, when they're, or if they're gonna decide to do it or not, but um, I'll keep tabs with them and let them know because shouldn't be hard to find a, a spot that that'll work for them out there. They do something like an inside banner or something that you could put up or take down. That's another thing I suggested is something that could be put up during fair or whatever, or left for however long it seemed appropriate and then taken down. Um, I'd be happier with something like that. And, you know, uh, uh, the idea of painting on a building too, you know, like, they, especially an uh, old wooden building and it expands and contracts, you know, and it just like the paint just falls off after a couple of years, you know, and um, so you would have this issue and then she's like, well, you got to paint it anyway. Well, it's a big deal. I paint over it. Well, it's, it's a lot different painting over a white building with white paint than it is, you know, painting over uh, some mural with something, you know. Yeah. And the banner kind of, it's, it's a, that's a printing type thing. Yep. I think they were shooting for more of an artwork yep. celebration of the 150th. So, yeah, uh, I think it's a good idea, but we'll see if anybody's interested. I don't have time to paint one. Yeah. Like, and you get. <laughs> yeah. If so, I may be a little careful with Mary Jane, she's got a lot of really good ideas, very, very active. For many things, we really, really appreciate her, but. She's got some ideas and she just, you know, she got on me one day to Main Street, why we got a couple of buildings that are pretty shabby. Well, she says, Won't you, city guys got nothing to do every day. Why don't you have them paint them all? <laughs> so we don't own them. <laughs> well, so what? Just go paint them. I said, Well, who's going to pay for it? No, it's, yeah. no, that, I mean, that's. Well, that's, you know, you got to, it takes all sorts of people to make the world go around. Right. You need idea of people out there. And, why yep. we would do that. I just, yep. Mary, I said, that's, you know. Yep. So um, I, I'll i just, I guess I'd just leave it at, uh, I didn't hear anything specific from them. And uh, if they want to do something out there, I would like to see what that is first and then bring it to this board. Pete's got a good idea. I would. Yep. Yep. And like I say, I, would, I wouldn't worry about it too much if it was uh, if they're planning on doing a, a portable, you know, like the panel idea, you know. So then if it's yes. whatever, once the time frame has gone, they can just, you know, take it somewhere. Just, you know, put it up for a year and take yep. it down. Yep. So, so that's all I have on that. Uh, Sturgeon Trail. All right. Now, the Sturgeon Trail Fishing Pier Project. Uh, 
now the if as you're you may probably be aware over by big Andy road there we've got those there's three of those concrete fishing piers there's concrete base and then they kind of jut out um they're pretty poor shape uh the uh the way they were put together wasn't uh wasn't the best and then um they were built on loose rock you know so the 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 piles that are out there holding things up are just kind of balanced on loose rock you know it's not the best. Then they're cracking up the parts of the big concrete part that holds everything together and showing signs of, you know, failure. So we want to get those done pretty soon. Uh, we do have a little money. Uh, I think we got about 5,000 in the uh, Natural Resource Foundation. And we have, a, I think, roughly 5,000-ish in the uh, uh, ATC funds yet that the county has from when they did that transmission line. Um, so we got about 10,000 and I don't know, ballpark and do you remember what, uh, we were thinking to replace? Was it two or three of those? Have you, have you seen the, uh, the new metal one that's yeah. out there? Yep. So what we were looking at doing is doing at least two more of those in place of those three that are out there. Um, maybe three, if we can afford it. Um, you had some numbers there. Um, for three of them removal, it, there's a little variation on size, but just under sixty thousand dollars. So the yeah the total project. Mm -hmm. So what we were looking at doing is applying for a Wisconsin Waterways grant, same group that does the uh, the boat docks that we did. Um, they do shore fishing piers all the time. Um, and that's a 50% grant. So we'd be able to get a little money through that. And then uh, possibly uh, the idea of maybe possibly scaling it down to two of those piers versus having three of them. So uh, I just wanted to bring it to your attention that we will probably be applying for a grant uh, to, to do that. I, I may have to run a resolution through uh, before that gets approved, but I I can get them I can get the grant application in and get that done at the next meeting if we need to have that in. And I think the grants are due by the end of May. So so what would the resolution be? The giving you the authority to the, sign the. It basically gives. It says that the county's interested in applying for funds for this project. You know, uh, basically, it says that the county did authorize me to apply for this grant. It isn't just me trying to find money somewhere. You know, <laughs> so it's it's pretty common with all these grant yeah. programs to have a resolution required. So, um, if that's required, I'll bring that forward. Sometimes they allow you to use past ones if it's within so many years, and we just did that doc. Um, for big falls last year we got the funding for that so we'll see if that if that's good enough or not but so would we, is that something we'd be able to get done this year yet or do the grants come in and then we would have to do the actual work next next year next spring yes it remains to be seen if if like the wisconsin waterways is pretty good about turning around their grants once they approve them at their meetings i think their meetings probably in June or July or something like that, they're within a week or two, you usually get the actual paperwork saying you got that money. Yeah. So at that point, you can spend that money. So it's a possibility we could do it this fall. Um, you can do the installation into winter. Too. Yeah. So um, the type of insulation, installation uh, that we need to do, is it better for the water to be low? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because I know Radkeys, whenever they want to do some work, up yeah, they want to bring the barge. It's got to be like right now. They got to yeah. come up because yep. they can't get any farther yeah. if it's any lower. Yeah. So these are John, I got piers that they put in. Yeah, if you've uh, been out to the Sturgeon Trail, or if you want to head out there sometime, um, there is one that looks like a little bridge. You know, it's a trellis design, yeah. um, so it's a metal uh, truss looking thing that sticks out into the water oh, they pound a couple piles in you got a drawing there. Uh, they pound a couple piles in and then they anchor it on the shore so it's it's supported in the middle ish and then it uh, juts out over the water um 
And I've seen this, yeah. Yep, it's pretty, pretty good design. There's they're going in all over the place. Um, out of Gamey County has it. Out of Gamey County's got a ton of them, and uh, you know, you go over there by uh, what's where is uh, Sturgeon is all the time there, Bitch Ioctin, Shy Octon area there. There's a lot of them along the river there, and, and various other parks on the rivers are, are doing the same design. It's pretty, uh, pretty straightforward, you know. The, the the structure probably lasts a long time. I think the last time didn't we put the decking on it or something? Volunteers. Volunteers put the decking on it. So and it was loaded Monday. Every yeah. every spot you could fish from, people were fishing off of those. Sure. Yeah, they're popular. Um we may catch a little flack for that first one, you know, but the ones that we got out there are not, they're not up to safety standards, you know, <laughs> you know, like the, the deck thing that's kind of parallel to the water there. It's, it's leaned down towards the river. There's no edge to catch a wheelchair or something. Um, so yeah, it's, they should go soon. Um, we actually had this in our capital plan for, I think next year, the year it's after it's year. Is it this year. So we do have some money in capital for this as well. So that's, um, we, we would probably be able to pay for a couple, couple of them out of what we've got now, but if we get this grant, we sh will likely be able to do all three. So I said, it'd be kind of foolish of us not to apply for a grant, right. kind of pause for a minute and, and see if we can get that grant, uh, before we do anything. So, and isn't a lot of the cost, I'm sorry, a lot of the cost taking out the cement piers that are there. That's actually not as much as you would you would think. It's the the actual materials for the piers themselves. By the time you get the the manufactured steel part, the decking, and then the installation of that's pretty involved. Driving the pilings, and they build a big um, concrete abutment anchor with right. a keyway in it to. Right. So it's once you so add up small compared to the rest of those. Stuff. Yeah, once okay. you add up all that stuff, it's it was it surprised me when I started digging into it how how quickly that added up. Yeah. So. Yeah, just those piles they drive in are pretty spendy, you yeah. know that pipe. Yeah. But they're actually driven piles versus yeah. you know just a little someone with a you know, bucket you know, full of concrete, yeah. you know, wedged between a couple of rocks, you know, and um, yeah. set it on that. <laughs> John, I got, I got a question. I don't beat the stupid we talked about. It's wonderful stuff we do. I think it's great. How come you could, we can, this group could do all that and we can't put a picnic table by the water? And play it's, it's under different uh, rules. The, uh, yeah, doc, who, who makes it? Uh, I, I know. That. I know. It's, a, it's elected officials. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we had the slabs there, and we had one picnic table down there, and all of yeah. disappeared. I got so many people ask me, yeah. what happened? And I said, well, the voting board said we can't have that. But yeah. Then we said right here, do the same thing on the river, same river. Yeah. I think it's the same one. The docks right are here. different. You know, you can build this big, almost <laughs> yeah, a big dock. <laughs> you can build this dock sticking out into the water, concrete footings, all this stuff, real big structure. And that's okay because it's dock going into the river. It's under DNR's uh, rules for docks. Now, if you were to pour that same slab along the edge of the river to put a picnic table well, on it, we did. Yeah, then it would be a big no-no. Everybody's <laughs> happy that picnic table's on there, and oh, wait, they're all gone now. Yeah. Is it so, just, is it just a setback? It's no sense. No, it's the flood zone. It's it, zone it or plane. Setback. There's yeah. two different categories. And the federal government gets involved with uh, what you can put in there. And if you ignore it and say, oh, we're going to do it anyways, then everybody in Wapaka County is at risk for losing flood insurance. Yep. If you, um, yeah. So it's kind of a big deal yeah. uh, over such a obvious yeah. benefit to the, the public. It's much different than our dock down there and all. No, I we put the doctor, but you can't put a picture table next. You're year. preaching yeah. to the choir, and then you know, and it doesn't help that certain cities ignore those rules. You know, <laughs> like, um, like maybe the one we're in. <laughs> you know, they build a big old shelter building right on the edge of the river, but uh, 
you know, that's uh, neither here nor there. Uh, but, but cities fall under different rules than the county do. Well, they no. fall under yeah. different jurisdiction, yeah. but the rules are still there. <laughs> they can just, they enforce their own rules. Right. They have their own. It, it's like uh, they fall into that same problem, though. You know, if if the federal government ever came in and pulled, called their bluff on that stuff, they could uh, they could screw up their insurance ability, too. So, um so is this a federal regulation or is this our zoning? Well, the zoning department enforces and lets us know uh, what's going on, but it's a federal rule or guideline that we have to follow that or, that prevented us from doing it. So really, the zoning don't really have a say in it? No. Okay, no. that's good to know. They just get blamed for it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's your answer, Jim. Yeah. 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 To me, it makes absolutely no sense. No. But I, yep. Yeah, and... I, I don't know, you know, it, common sense should prevail, but sometimes it don't, you know, and I, I, the rules are there for a reason, you know, just because we want to put a little shelter building, a picnic shelter next to the river, you know, well, I feel like we should be able to do that because we're the, you know, the public, whatever, we're doing it for the good of the public, but, you know, the guy with the house down the river, you know, can't do that either. and. Uh, you know, is, is is that a a a valid complaint on it on their part? You know, probably. You know, if we can get away with it, why can't they? You know, can they put a picnic table in that parking lot at Gills farther back from the river? Yeah, they told we can you have seventy five feet back. We oh, can okay. have picnic tables there. We just can't have a permanent structure. You can't have that picnic slab, table shelter cement slab to set it yeah. up. But that's there already, right? No, this not anymore. Yeah. There was one there. We had they floated away. <laughs> yeah. No, we got told we had to take those out of there. You know, it's just like blacktop in a parking lot. Can't have that, but now you go down there right now. There's a hundred boats and trailers parked in all the mud back there. Yeah. Boats sinking in that, or tires sinking in that far. And even a parking lot, you know, like when we did the concrete out there, you're not supposed to change that elevation at all yeah. in a floodplain. So if you put another layer on your parking lot, technically you're breaking the rules. Yeah. You're supposed to grind it, take some out, put it back, you know. Yeah. It is what it is. I, and like I say, the rules are there for a reason. Um, they're trying to prevent things that actually. I guess do I cause didn't mean problems. to bring that up, but yeah, you know, I didn't. There's <laughs> there's some things that irritate me pretty badly in that regard. You know, like we wanted to put a sign out there for. Now here's your point exactly. You know, we put that canoe kayak dock at Gill's Landing. That's okay. Yeah. We put screw piles in there and all kinds of stuff. We can't put a sign next to it that says yeah. can't put a sign you die because that four by four post is uh, violating floodplain stuff. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah, I don't pretend to say it makes sense, but um, they're they're enforcing rules they didn't make, and um, until those rules get changed by people that care, it's going to be that way, <laughs> you know. Today's my last day as mayor. Don't pick up. <laughs> so, <laughs> you're retired. So, you, so you're going to have time to work on that. You're going to <laughs> you're going to run for uh, you know federal office. Try and get uh, some uh, change. <laughs> got enough for you people here. Let me take a lot more of it. Yeah. So I put the fed, uh, the fishing pier on here just so we could say I would like to apply for that grant. I don't really need a motion or anything to apply for that. Um, I'm just wanted you to be aware before I send off papers and stuff. So uh, can you get that? Would you have to talk with Diane to get the resolution drawn up? You might as well. Okay. So our next county board meeting, we could. Well, it wouldn't be at this county board. It'd probably be the following one. And it don't matter really if we have that resolution right away. Oh, okay. It's just before they give us the funds, they want to make sure that it was a official, you know, okay with the county thing. And we've done that before. We apply for a grant and uh, they will just put that in the paperwork that the resolution is forthcoming or whatever. And, okay. and then the next county board that comes up, we would approve it because it should come through this committee first, be approved at this committee. And then it has, I think LGES, I think yeah has the next kick at that, and then it goes to county board. So, so that is upcoming. Um, 
And any other questions on that or anything you want to add in? No. So that's it for now. Uh, discussion on applying for ARPA funds for capital projects. All right. Uh, Ann and I was talk we're talking about this. Uh, the uh, the county has that uh, chunk of change that they got, and they I think it, we have until it's either beginning of May. I think it was uh, beginning of May to apply for uh, grants. Basically, again, you know, the county's uh, entertaining ideas for how to use that funds, uh, those remaining funds. Um, and one of the things that we talked about. And we do have some uh, funding in the capital for it's for this year, right? I think we got thirty five thousand in there. The yeah, yeah, for the flooring in the grandstand pavilion, um, we were thinking we could probably apply for some or all of that to come out of that, and it would save money in the capital program. Um, and we may need to add a little to that too, just because the price everything's been going crazy. Um, and that would be an appropriate uh, use for those funds because a lot of the wear and tear in that building as came when we did those drive-through immunizations yeah. and all that stuff. Um, so uh, we just wanted to check with you guys first before we applied for that. Um, so we would, I, I don't even remember who's running the, the evaluations. I, I would get a request to Heidi basically saying we would like this much of the ARPA money to be able to do this flooring stuff. Yeah, so, and I, I think it's appropriate use because not only did they use up some of the life expectancy of the floor uh, for the COVID shots and, and all of that that they did there, but if we can get it to look a little nicer and last a lot longer uh, with all the events we're having out there, I, I, um, I think it is a good use for that money. Yeah, and it's it's something that we were budgeting for already. I mean, we see value in it doing it's been approved uh, through finance and all that stuff. So I think just taking it that next step and saying, well, why don't we take that money out of this ARPA money and then you know that capital money that was allotted to this can be used for building roads or whatever you know some other need you know or maybe something that doesn't fall under the ARPA funding like piers on the <laughs> something you know trips. yeah <laughs> yeah 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 I think you can do you know if you have that specific request for that mm -hmm. I'd go ahead and do it because yeah well you're we're just, just taking money out of Yep. You know, a fund that's going to go away if you don't use it. Well, and, you know, originally when all this ARPA funding came out, I was, you know, looking at that stuff. Oh, come on in. Come on in. You with the soda group there? Yes. Okay. We'll we'll wrap up this item and then we'll be with you guys. Um, the, the, um, the original, when they came out asking for projects and whatnot, it was, I didn't feel it was right to use that for, you know, parks right away, you know, because uh, the original scope of all that ARPA funding is, it was pretty specific, you know, it should be going to health programs and, you know, things like that to be more prepared when there's another pandemic or something, you know. Um, so I did not apply for any of those in of our projects through that. But now that the the county's been, has claimed all this money, we can claim all of it based on lost revenues and all that stuff. Um, now those rules don't really apply. Those original scope rules, the county can use it as it sees fit. That's why they're doing this next round of, you know, do you have any projects that would we might use this funding for? So I think it'd be a good good fit for for this go around. Didn't feel comfortable the first go around asking for it, but now I do. Yeah, and the rule, like you said, the rules changed so much from yep. when it first came out. It, yep. it makes sense. Yeah. So. I think uh, I would like to move forward with with requesting that funding. So do you need a motion for that? Or it might be good just to have something. Okay. Um, looking for a motion to request. approve the request for ARPA funds uh, for the pavilion floor project. Now, before we go further, did we have anything else we wanted to ask out of that ARPA stuff? I don't remember. We Seems talked about powers. Possibly powers, um, the trail development stuff. So, I mean, 
do we want to talk about that separate and yeah i think okay. the, yeah I, don't, I wouldn't want to tie them together yeah okay so we need a motion to request funds for our or request using arpa funds for pavilion flooring and are you requesting it <coughs> from the, the county Yes, there's the a county has the funds. Yeah, county's got the money, and they just have a few people set up. Um, I know Heidi is on that, and I think there's a few other people are on that. I think Ryan's in on that. Yeah, and then so they they look them over, and then it goes to finance for approval on whether or not they want to use that funding for this or that or not okay, at all. So it doesn't have to go any further than the no, county. No, no, it's right at the county level. Okay. So, yep. So anyone want to make that motion? Looking for a mo to that motion. Yeah. How, how much do you really want to ask? I mean, were we close to 50 or something like that? Wasn't well, that? Uh, then, yeah. Then use 50. We're not going to cut it there. Um, or, or should we? We're getting new estimates. Yeah, That's what we're waiting yeah. So I don't think. 40, for, 40? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think we should nail a number down yet until they get the updated estimate on it because it's it's going to change it's going to be higher but you know estimated at okay 45,000 yes that'll give you some flexibility yeah. at 45 so today again you don't know what things cost they're yep. just going nuts yep and then even if they gave us 40 and it ended up being 45 we have the money mm -hmm. budgeted already so we could make up that difference with the yep. budget we already have That'll work. Yeah. These are these are real dollars, it's not cost sharing. So that's right. That's even yep. better. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Well, I'll make a motion to um, request uh, a grant from the county using ARPA funds in the amount of forty five thousand dollars to be used for. Uh, I'll say grandstand flooring. I, I'm not sure what the terminology sure. is. Um, To say. Sounds good to me. I'll second that. Two. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? <clears throat> uh, passed. Okay. So we may want to tweak that a little. Uh, so yeah, I'll make it. So I'll, cement. I'll make it sound. It, maybe like the we size what we were talking about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the size and things like that. Sure. We're just saying, well, the flooring is. So number seven, right? So that'll be all in your uh, explanation, you know, the whereas part. Yep. Um, the wear and tear from. Yep. COVID yeah. And all that There's stuff. a justification section on that form. Yeah. You know, you got to fill out and tell them why, yeah. why it fits and why we think it'd be a good use of that fund. And so did you want to go into powers uh, discussion? Oh yeah, this? we should probably do that. Um, yeah, so uh, we've been looking at uh, you know what to do with the Powers property, and uh, one of the things now and and did some work out there as far as laying out a rough where we could have a trail to get things started out there, and uh, the possibility of moving the winter trail up to Powers sooner than later, you know, as soon as possible, really. Um, so this would be a place that we could possibly use some of that money. Um, I'm not sure what numbers, did we get numbers yet? We were waiting on uh, some estimates. Yeah, I'm waiting things, on but, some stuff from highway. Yeah, so it would be a matter of, you know, us going out there, laying out a rough idea where we want the trail to go, you know, try and avoid trees as much as possible, but where you need to remove trees, you'll have to bump stumps and everything. So we would have to, set aside some money to be able to pay highway to come out there with some sort of equipment that can that can remove stumps and shape it a little bit where needed um, but the idea being get an initial trail system in there so that we can get it going right away and then in the future we can add sections as needed and move forward so what would you like to add to that Ann? anything so I guess I don't have a number in front of me on what that uh, what we're asking for there. 
obviously we'd have a number before we asked for ARPA funds on that. Um, so was, what's your thoughts on that? How you wanna go about that? Um, do you got a ballpark in mind of what would get us started? I think it would be a much smaller number than the other one. I think in the $10,000 range, it'd be mm -hmm. more than so, that. So if we worded it, uh, well, here's what a, up to 15,000 and then whatever you yeah. get is, you know. Yeah, and here's what I'm thinking. It, it, it could be a, a phase project, you know. So for phase one, we can have, if we had 15,000 to start with, that would get us pretty far in what we need to do because we can do a fair amount of the work ourselves, you know, knocking a few things out of the way, getting the rough in. But then when you need the heavier equipment, bring in highway and tell them we've got X amount of money, you know, we want to spend that doing this, this, and this, and we can see how far we get, you know, and because um, highway likes to do things by time and material anyway. So they're not uh, terribly adept at giving us a quote. They're always, <laughs> they're always afraid of going over, you know, so they want to give you a really high quote, um, but um, they're really good at the uh, time and material charging us just for what they use. So um, if we can get, a number, give them a number, we could theoretically get a lot of this knocked out, at least have a functional trail system that we could start up. So, so basically this is, there's no trails out there right now, really. There's, there's a few sections that are out there, but the loops that you started tie yeah. those together. We okay. utilize as much as already out there. Um, and then I was just identifying corridor that followed the correct drain for drainage and sustainability in, in the open canopy areas to minimize the amount of tree removal that we'd have to do in addition. So, and there's, I mean, it pretty easily could accommodate a few miles of trail out there. So there's one area that'll be a little bit more labor-intensive, more tree removal. Yeah, there's a hundred some acres out there. So it's a, this is what we talked about. You know, this would be a good use for this property. We are hoping to kickstart that and get it going like right away and get this thing moving. And then we can phase in, in the future. What do we do with those buildings? You know, and what do we do with this and that? So this would be, if we can get a trail out there we could start grooming that this year if, if we had a trail, you know, we've got a place to put a groomer. We've got all that stuff. No one can tell us we can't go when we want to go. So um, I think this is a really good opportunity to do it. So we're looking for funds for the initial trail development. Yep. And we could set it amount, you know, whatever you're comfortable with asking for. And, uh, I'm comfortable asking for it all. <laughs> what's, a, what's a realistic number? I think, I think you know, the, what do, what do you think, Ann? You know, I, I, I hate to go too low, but at the same time, you know, you don't want to take more than you need to get going. And then, right. you know, like, oh, we couldn't spend it, you know, you know, so I think there's plenty of other work that could be done out there. We could spend whatever we got. I think, you know, uh, and at this point, initially, I've been looking at it in terms of, you know, the rough work to get it in, to get the corridor. But I mean, at that point, if we've under undershot and have money left over, then you just continue to, yep. you know, improve that corridor to make that because the ultimate goal is to have a finished corridor. Yep. So. And we haven't gotten any ARPA funds, have we, for parks and rec? No. So I, I think the public use of um, trails, we should get a little bit of it. Yeah, and that's one of the things that they focused on initially was outdoor, you know, right. getting people outdoors, and exactly. getting them healthier to begin with, and yeah. then, you know, like uh, giving them somewhere to go when you do have some sort of problem like we had, you know. Yeah, so, so. you're not overrun at all of your other sites. Yeah. So why not ask for two of your phase one is your rough, kind of make it known that the, it's the rough, design in phase two of whatever number and so you're asking for the basic amount and then more on top of that 
so they can see what what your plan is this year and you know if you can get through it this year if not you'd have your phase two that would come in later but ask for the commitment for the funds for phase one and phase two and that way you, they know there's more of a plan mm -hmm. to, to do it I, that's just a suggestion so they can see it we don't i don't know what kind of funds they have and what flexibility but to me it just seems that you're you're getting your basic layout and, and now you want to refine it. And it's whether you call it all phase one or one and two, to me, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Just well, I think for this initial go around, I would prefer to ask for some money to do what we can do. And then we've got, this group has some work to do as far as what are we do? What are we doing out there? There's going to be a fair amount of cost doing something with the buildings we've got out there doing something with, you know, we're we're scabbed in a rough parking area. We're planning on doing that, you know. And so, I think getting something initially started, letting it kind of flesh out a little bit, the needle may change on where we want to go. You know, it's a. I don't want to come out and say this is the grand plan, and then be like, ah, we're wrong. <laughs> you know. Um, so yeah. ARPA's one-time funds. Yep. So getting rid of that main building is a one-time deal. So maybe we should look at getting funds to get rid of that building because it's basically a safety hazard the way it sits now. But you guys wanted to do, you were talking about something about uh, doing something with the building. Is that, uh, or is it just a better idea to get rid of, you know? I'm not sure, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you think about that, was it make yeah. sense to have? to get uh, someone's professional opinion on this, you know, the structure of that building. Yeah. yeah, I mean, just on the on the surface, we look at it and there's like a lot of issues, you know, yeah. you can check off a lot of issues. Um, does that mean it should go away entirely? I, I, I don't know, I don't know. Could you say it's a safety issue, a fire issue, or all, all know, of this all, is all, valid? All, all <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that, that again, that yep. could be a specific use that you need so if, if that's it. something we want to pursue we would have to get some real numbers you know say are we ready to pull the plug on at least the house building you know yeah and uh, if we are we can get some numbers and and ask for that and that would be i would say that's a separate project yeah you know yeah separate ask yep yeah. and we should have toilets out there we, yeah we do have uh, some pretty rough <laughs> vault ones out there. Oh, well, we should be able to have a decent number for one of those. I mean, unless we did a- Oh, if we were to- Water, you know what I mean? Yeah. If we're not set up- A vault type yeah, toilet. Yeah, we could do something like that. Um, I can get a number for that real quick, yeah. but the problem is where does it go right now? You know, yeah. are, we, are, we, are we set on that initial parking lot, or, you know, halfway down the driveway, like we were talking, or are we doing something closer to where the house is if we're taking the house out? You know, I don't know yet. So you can certainly get one, uh, plop it in there, but uh, they're, you can't really move them very easily. <laughs> they're not very portable. Uh, so I don't know. So do you want to get those numbers first or do you want us to you want or, or do we even need to to make motions that we just agree that those are the, like the three projects out there that that you guys should look into and ask for whatever the numbers yeah. are so initial trail development trail development and then the uh house removal and then a restroom parking lot so yeah. you need to be identified with initial trail development right motion yeah just write it up so who's ever you know yeah we'll pay for this but not that because yep. i think they're all needed uh things out there mm -hmm. so if they just approve one that'd be great if they approve them all even better yeah i don't know what they've done in the past but you're, you're looking for almost a whole package 
So taking down buildings, putting in a bathroom, putting in a parking lot, they all kind of work together. So to me, it's, it's like we estimate the overall cost to do a functional park, make this into a park is X dollars. And these are the yeah. funds that we will need. That's yeah, right. in the past, you always know, kind of piecemeal things together through capital projects and whatnot, you know, as we go. And we can certainly do that too, if this is denied or whatever, you know. Yeah. Um, but I think it I think it makes sense having it as a multi-part thing so we can say, you know, this is what we really need right now is to develop the initial trail. Then the next safety reasons, whatever, um, this house needs to go away, and then a restroom. Yeah. You know, we could certainly have a porta potty put in there. Those aren't free either, but uh, well, I'll make a motion to approve asking for ARPA money to get this trail started for the public. However you word it properly. <laughs> right. And at whatever you think is appropriate to ask for. For Powers Park Develop. Yeah, for Powers yeah. Park Because it should fit in the ARPA because it, the yeah. parks was greatly used during the pandemic. So Sue has a motion. So we have a motion. Looking for a second. I'll second it. Jack. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed. And that passes. Okay. Well, thank you all. We've got some work to do here. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're here for. Yeah. All right. Um, so that brings us back up to seven. Yes, sir. So do you want to kind of give a little uh, starter on this one, Ann? Sure. So uh, I got contacted by Willie, Willie Fresh, Fresh Hour Fresh Hour, about uh, hosting uh, an event at the fairgrounds out on the track, doing an off-road racing event. Um, and we have hosted events similar to this in the past, and it's a pretty big undertaking. Um, and he can talk about that a little bit. Um, but because it's such a large undertaking, thought it was best that the committee uh, hear about it and then give their blessing on having an event. So like, is it ATV, UTV type stuff or big truck? It's trucks, buggies, UTVs and ATVs classes on the same track. Mm -hmm. um, it, uh, we would, would utilize a good a good portion of the area in front of the grandstands and um, work around and obviously you you know the the there's some gravel and a tractor pull and all that there we leave it in the same condition obviously and and possibly have to seed you know that's kind of normal for us you know grass seed too when we're done but um, I'm talking um, we we and we would keep. Uh, we would want to do it like once a year and keep dirt somewhere on the premises. She said there was an area to keep it and some barricades. Um, and uh, so every year we kind of pull in and build the track and tear it all down and pull it out basically. So um, if, um, if the fair day wasn't right before Crandon, I, <laughs> I would love to be at the fair, but it's uh that close to Crandon is, is you know, worry, worrisome that people would, you know, racers would show up. Yeah. So but our, our series is similar to that series, except for we just run smaller tracks and, and communities and stuff like this. We try to stay, we try to stay all our tracks. We try to be an hour or less from the Fox Valley, which you guys fit right into. So it, it works well because we have, partners that own excavation companies and road companies and con you know all these different contractors so we bring in all their equipment to make this happen you know so uh you're building like moguls and uh yeah there jumps, jumps and turns and whatnot but we try to build them we build them in a fashion where they're fast and they're down because we got to yeah, now, you know. <laughs> so, like, like, for instance, like a lot of our jumps are the um, K rails that you see on the on the road, and we'll just push dirt up to each side of them. 
you know, and we do that kind of, you know, a lot of times, depending on where it is, we'll put billboard tarps under it, or we'll, you know, in some areas we put sawdust on top of billboard tarps or just sawdust or, and we have like a big, um, like a, a big hopper trailer that dumps sawdust, you know, so just, you know, we use just different tactics to make the cleanup super fast because it's a temporary track, you know, that we're doing. What are some of the other places you guys run? Um, we've ran, um, in Chilton and, uh, um, and in Slinger, Wisconsin and in, uh, at Seymour, um, fairgrounds, um, the Seymour one would be the most similar to you guys. Um, that track, it was during the fair and, um, we basically built it in like four hours and tore it down in like two. It was kind of crazy. <laughs> and we didn't know if we could do it. <laughs> That's not normal. <laughs> but it was right. It was Saturday night at the fair. And um, so like Friday night when the sprint cars were done, they ended up going late to almost 1 a.m. And then we basically built the majority of the track um, by 4 a.m. And then we, and then um, in the morning, just did some testing and, and adjustments. And we were having the youth races by 12. But um, that particular event, there was basically like a tornado. And they, they ended up having to close the entire pair down, like right when our races were about to go out. And so then we, even though we had fixed the track, the safety hazard of, you know, lightning and thunder. Um, and stuff. So we ended up running in the morning. And even though we ran in the morning and a lot of fans didn't know, I think we still had like 2,500 spectators, which is really good, you know, maybe on a Sunday morning. Um, and then we hurried up and did like a 45 minute turnaround to fix the track for the demo derby. That's you. Um, <laughs> it ended up working out real good because the our yeah, they, the demo derby and the other uh, show that they had that day wouldn't have, they wouldn't have been able, if we weren't there, we fixed the track for them. It, you know what I'm saying? So there was just standing water everywhere and not enough drainage. So, uh, so how long have you guys been a group? Just two years, but it's, this is the longest running group and it went out of business in 1998. And it ran from the early 70s to 98. And I run it with the same constitution and rules and bylaws and everything that they ran originally. So uh, so te technically it's the longest running, but I just rebirthed it True. you know, two years ago. True. So trying to start small, it's it's hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes to keep a handle on it. That's so. Well, you know, the the main reason we were a little hesitant, I'm not sure Anne explained this to you guys, but this for the benefit of the group was we had this other group, I forget even what they're called. They're out of California somewhere. They came in and built a little track out there and had a race at the fairgrounds. At the I, fairgrounds. Yeah, I'm very familiar. I was I spectated with my wife. Yeah, I went to it too. I mean, I think it was it was pretty neat, but now some of the concerns that I had was, I mean, obviously they they like skipped town and we got left. That was their first and last race. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, we got, we got left cleaning up the mess afterwards, so that sure. that kind of stunk. But uh, the as uh, how are you addressing like uh, safety as far as being close to the grandstands and things like that? I know they had put a big fence up, but I I don't know. We have they, to do the same thing. Yeah, we would uh, need to attach something to the the main. There's like the, the I-beams, like e even though the it cost a lot to cover the gravel, so I'll probably stay away from the gravel the first year, but even though the the, the race trucks are going to be that far from the spectators, I still have to keep like, I still have to have some fencing and stuff to keep tires in and whatnot. Sure. So, but. So um, that's something you're addressing in your. Yeah, you we have to, we have very expensive insurance and they don't let us not. <laughs> yeah. We're not allowed to not have all the safety stuff in place. It was seemed a little sketchy the way that other group came in. I thought it was cool, but I mean, they, 
they set a big ramp right in front of the grandstands and they were like flying underneath that overhang that goes over the track. It was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but I was like, ooh. Yeah. So if we if we were right in front of the grandstands, then we besides fencing also need cables. So okay. basically a four thousand pound truck needs to be able to hit that fence. And, and that's what I was concerned about is they just put some chain link fence up and I was like, that's not gonna stop one of those trucks. Yeah. <laughs> if you're if the track's a hundred feet from that wall, it would just need chain link, but right in front of it, like they did, it yeah. needs cables. Okay. Cables are the you know, that stops everything. Yep. You know. Yep. So yeah, so I guess in, in from our point of view, from the, you know, to rent out the fairgrounds for something like this, we just have to come up with what would be an acceptable deposit. You know, how much would it cost to fix whatever is being done if you guys happen to, you yeah. know. And I usually do a $5,000 bond, mm -hmm. you know, and I also, as part of my insurance, I have 300,000 um, property damage. Okay. So, and that's like, um, the, you know, I worry more about the heavy equipment damaging something than anything, you know. Sure. So the the that part of it's where I where I like having the property damage. You know, a race car can do some damage, but a dozer <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can pick up a lot of power lines real quick. <laughs> Just you know, plan for the worst with insurance, you know. Um, but uh, but yeah, so um, I don't know. Exactly. I think I know. I have a good idea of where the location of the of the dirt is, and uh, um, you know, we, you know, the, that trail for dump trucks would need to be paid attention to just to make sure we didn't damage anything in the park, you mm -hmm. know, or in the fairgrounds, you know, while putting dirt in. But um, realistically, it's a that your ground. You got the grounds there are are uh, a real natural fit for what we're doing, you know? So just the, the size of the grandstands, the size of your community, the, close, the proximity to the valley, uh, being able to keep material on site. So, um, yeah. And when were you thinking of uh, having a, the first event? 2024, that's all I know yet, so. Okay. Um, and I'd probably, you know, obviously discuss that with Ann and the fair, you know, mm -hmm. so, yep. um, just the possible dates. There's, we had, the, talked, oh, we had talked initially about the first one being after fair, just because we don't know how, I mean, once they've cleaned up, we don't know what kind of effect that'll have overall in mm -hmm. that area. So just for that first one, the shoot yeah. for it. Yeah. Originally, I was trying to push for maybe doing one this year, but it was just getting too crazy. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's not a. Um, um, but yeah, we normally do a bond. So if you want a higher bond, we can do that. But it it just it makes it does make things a little quicker if there's an issue, and, you know. So. And I think, uh, you know, the having another event like this, especially a regular event, um, would be really good for the grounds and for the community in general. Um, I think there's a lot of people in this area, especially the you now that I think Cran I hadn't been to Cranon in years and I went last year and uh, the UTVs, you know, all the classes of UTVs that are running up there now and so it's so relatable to a lot of people in this area you know i think it's uh having some sort of races like that in this area would be very popular um uh, yeah we have um we don't have all the classes they have they're you know they have like yeah. 500 racers we have 100 yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but yep. they have sixty thousand people or no. a couple thousand but but yeah, we have um, yeah a stock UTV class. There's a a good old boy car class that's basically like a bunch of mm -hmm. old crown picks with roll cages. And yeah. It's all the safety gear, and you know a lot of you know a lot more uh, blue collar classes than you see at Grandin. 
you know, there's no million dollar <laughs> race trucks, trophy trucks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A little less of that. Yeah. So, but oh, um, I think it's a, I think it's a popular, uh, would be a popular event. Um, I just wanted to have that in front of you guys to say, you know, like, yes, we should look at this uh and move forward or yeah i think know. we should with you know have diane check out the the particulars to make yep. sure the county's covered but i think it would be you have it out there a lot of people are going to show up yep that's the hope yeah that's yep. <laughs> probably the hope. they will yeah um the uh yeah and we do um, a lot of we make a lot of short videos and stuff and, and put them out on social media and YouTube and stuff for the races. And um, this one, we might do radio ads and stuff, too. But, you know, we we you know, you, you usually, you know, you should see a pretty heavy influx of people from out of the area, I would think, too, coming in, you know, um, so even up at Crandon. Every year, it's sixty some percent of the fans are from like the Fox Valley. True. So, now what about uh, the rest of the event? You know, I mean, the you got the track and the racers and stuff. Now, what do you do as far as do you have entertainment? Do you sell things? You know, usually I'll have like a we we have um that that building right behind your grandstands. Mm -hmm. I would rent too for sure um and uh usually i give out i give out all the checks to all the racers right after the race and um while they're waiting for us to write them they buy a lot of beer true and <laughs> no, and then usually we'll have like a small band in there you guys partner with any group to do that stuff uh all the sales and all that stuff we don't do that on our end it's always a usually i use a local 4-h okay. or, or yeah. rotary club you know I haven't reached out to anybody yet, but right, right. I always like trying to use the 4-H whenever possible. So. so do you have food too? Yes. So we would either utilize you guys as concessions and subcontract somebody, or we would have food trucks come in or both. So I try not to be the guy buying the burger. So yeah. <laughs> right. to put, put a professional in there yeah. and have us have them give us a percentage. And then we normally have um all our events normally have uh monster truck rides for kids during the um the halftime kind of so the intermissions just so. for kids. I would say well, that. Just for, yeah. <laughs> yeah. small adults too <laughs> yeah. for the kid and all of us. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it's pretty cool because while the, we have to have these intermissions to re-prep the track. So instead of the fans kind of have nothing to do, uh, you can, the, the monster truck actually goes drives around the racetrack. So it's it's kind of neat. You know, even I've been in racing for 24, 25 years, but like it's always neat to be on the track. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. a, and I think, you know, as, as a racer, I still think it's neat when I'm at a track and I go walk the track. I, I can't imagine how excited kids are getting, fans, you know, getting to be on the track. So, how many events do you have? Uh, normally, we try to do like five a year. Next year, I might do six. I don't know. We'll see. So, trying to slow down growth right now. <laughs> so. yeah. and so how many, how many uh, cars or vehicles would you have? Uh, it should be. This is a one day event. Right? Yes. So. It's, it's, it'd be normally, it'd be, it should be like 100 race teams. It's a good guess. So, is that a team is a car? One yeah. Or yeah. One vehicle. Yeah. And even though it's one day, usually they camp out the night before and camp that night. A lot of the teams do, you know, so probably two thirds of the teams usually camp out. So hopefully we have the facilities for that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So. Yeah, I think it's a it's a real good fit for the grounds. I was really excited when the first, when the first one came around and, you know, just sucked getting kicked with that one. But uh, yeah. Um, oh. I think it is a good fit. And if we just cover our bases better than, than last time, I, I think it'll work out really well. Yeah. The biggest issue with them was like they didn't have fans and, and then had some issues paying the racers and didn't clean up for those the big things. Yeah. Okay. 
right. Yeah, in, in hindsight, um, you know, and maybe that's on our, our fault. We should have investigated it more before it started. Their insurance wasn't really insurance for an event like that. It was. <laughs> oh, really? It was something out of California that they they had. Uh, it was for like promotions for selling T-shirts or something, you know, like their insurance. Oh, they're like, yeah, this is our insurance. And they handed us a policy. And so afterwards, because there's some liability stuff on there, we're like, well, let's contact their insurance and see if uh, we can get them to pay for some of this cleaning up the fairgrounds uh, deal. and. Their insurance is like it's not for that, you know. It was a, it was a like I say a policy for selling merchandise <laughs> or something, and it wasn't even. They had like crossed out the you know, whited out the section that it was for some specific event that wasn't ours. Oh, <laughs> you really? know, and they whited it out and put some kind of you know they typed in our information. Sure, you're also insured, you know. <laughs> and they, you know we're not insurance people. We looked at the forms. We're like, yeah, it looks like an insurance form. Yeah, we weren't uh, covered at all. <laughs> so if there would have been an injury or something, you know, like they'd have probably been able to sue us too, you know. So, and just so you know, so we're our, my main goal is to turn soda into a sanctioning body for series all around the U.S. and Canada, and we just started that. So we actually supply insurance to other groups. Okay. You know, besides having good insurance, we also. <laughs> yeah. So you know what the insurance is supposed to be, you know, yeah. Not, yeah. Not like back into typing it in yourself. <laughs> we have a, yeah, we have five million total too. So it's 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 um most facilities like yours would require like two million. We have five million. So um, which is better. Like we have a race, our first race this year is at Oshkosh, um, uh, hopefully here. And um they you know they require five million. Okay. But uh, we're not going through all the horse farms. But. <laughs> so. Any other questions for them? Or I don't think so. I think you guys move ahead and uh, see if we can make it happen. All right. Well, that's good. That's good. Um, be nice to see the see the track area used for something else. You know, uh, we had the tractor pull group for quite a few years there, and when that uh, Zabel guy died in an accident there that kind of fizzled out and no one else took the reins on that so it's nice to have something outside a fair that uses that so the know. fair is the only one using the tractor pole now yeah pretty much they they want to do more uh eventually they want to they were looking at put another pulling lane in so they could do two at the same time and then mm -hmm. they would be able to have a nationals event um that was one of the main reasons they redid the polling lanes just recently was to get it outside of the grandstand awning so that we could meet the sanctioning uh width of the track yeah yeah so um but yeah there's a there again it's all depends on someone pushing it you know someone wants to someone has to host the events and, and try and get it done so it's just a matter of uh it's a ton of money and a ton of risk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it is. Yeah. I run a weld shop. I, I don't, it's like a side thing. True. Sure. You know, yep. uh, it's definitely more work than it should be. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's why things fizzle out sometimes. You, know, yeah. you need somebody that's very committed. You know? Yeah. And the main excavation company that I'm, we're, I'm basically partnered with is another guy that just gets everything done. Between us both, we really it's how everything happens, I guess. You know, it's um I'm 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 too pushy and get a lot of stuff done. And he he makes me look like I'm standing still. So, <laughs> <laughs> so. well good. Well, I appreciate you coming in today. Yeah, thanks yeah. for coming in. Yeah. Do you have fun, Austin? <laughs> yeah, pretty bored. Yeah. There's a snack machine down the hall. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, give me five. Go get them five. Give me five. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Spring break. Yeah. 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 See ya. Wasted half my day in. <laughs> All right, so we did seven. We're not doing number six. Artwork.
it. We're down to supervisor report, I guess. Anybody have anything? Me either. So we're good on that one. Good. All right. <laughs> Number 12. That's wrong, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll just go quick through the list here. So we were up two powers uh, over the course of the last month. Um, the buildings are cleaned out up there um, in anticipation for being ready to open up for spring for the public. Um, winter storage. So we had our early storage removal at fairgrounds, the first round of campers and boats came out of one of the buildings so that we could host an early event. Um, and now it's the time of year, now that the river's open, that we'll start getting calls for people that want their boats and campers a little bit earlier. And we encourage that because it makes the final day <laughs> of storage a lot less hectic for us. Um, fairgrounds events will also start to pick up right now. So we'll start to see a lot more use at the grounds. Um, and then we were talking about it earlier, the docks went in on the Wolf River yesterday. So um, weather's pretty much looking perfect for um, a busy season on the river in the spring. Um, other things for this time of year that are kind of normal for us, um, taking care of some of our safety training. So we partnered again with Highway Department to do chainsaw safety class and we actually did that up at Powers this year, which worked out really nice. So it's nice to be able to um, separate yourself from the public when you're doing that training, especially, and it's a big area with a lot of variety to choose from. So, and we did two days up there. One day was a beginning class just for highway uh, employees. And then the second day, our staff went through with some of the highway employees that had already been through the initial training, so a little bit more advanced training. Um, next one that NUIP, our uh, invasive species partnership group, um, I got notified that their uh, gold sands uh, is going through the next grant cycle for 2024. It'll be another two year grant cycle and hopefully we'll be in that again. This past one worked out really great. They did work at um, Oakwood, some of the work that we've been doing at Powers um, also applied for that grant. Um, and then this round two, they're gonna try and piggyback off of some of the work that was done in um, our region in public spaces and do outreach to the neighbors the private landowners to try and uh, piggyback off of some of that momentum. So I know for sure we had interest, um, one of our neighbors up at Powers who um, I'd already been in contact with, I knew that he was doing some um, work with the base of Olive and some other stuff that's on Powers and his property. Um, so he was pretty excited to potentially get some assistance from this grant program too. So that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, that's... Uh, the basics for what we've been up to. Oh, I did get a call about Shaw's Landing, uh, thanking you guys for clearing up those snow piles that were in the parking lot. <laughs> it was a, a couple of busy days. One nice long email explaining from uh, the guy who owns the bait shop and you want and explaining a lot of people were coming in. Plus I fielded a few calls yeah. and he must've told them I was the chairman of the partner. <laughs> so they weren't happy over in the London area, but now they are because you guys do a good job getting rid of those piles. So. I don't know, maybe in the future, we could have maybe a committee meeting at Powers property or something. I know mm -hmm. I've gone up there and walked it and it's, it's a lot to see, and I don't know how many members have seen it. I think Pete has. Mm -hmm. It would. It's maybe yeah, when you could. get a little farther, or what? I saw it when it was still full. <laughs> did Did you call in big dumpsters for all that stuff in the house? No, um, we moved it all with our dump truck. Oh, tractor wow. dump truck. Yeah. You had your hands full. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a big job. So should we wait till it gets a little warmer? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> another one. Yeah. 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 And another thing uh, for a future meeting, uh, 
Well, I guess we can work on that later. I'll I'll talk to Pete and see where we're at on a, you know, a few things, but but yeah. So we could certainly do a. We always used to do a tour at some point during the spring summer. Um, so we could incorporate that into something like that, or we could host a meeting up there. The only problem with hosting a meeting up there is, you right. know, we're not really able to do that thing up up there. Um, so we could do something like that where we meet here, do the business part, and then, you know, take a ride up there. Yeah, yeah. That would probably fit better. Yeah. yeah. We've done that before. That's yeah. It, it worked mm -hmm. out nice, I thought. Yep. How many acres is this again at Powers? Was it a hundred? Yeah. Just over a hundred, yeah. And you, are you going to have a trail going all the way back to the creek there? We'd like to have a spur that goes down to it, yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be nice, yeah. I could see kids wanting to go there oh, and yeah. fish. Yep. Yep. So it is one of the bigger features of the property. Is it a, it's bordered by a creek there or whatever? What is that called? The some branch of the whatever? Yeah, it's a, I think it's the north branch of the little wolf still there. Okay. It's the same water that goes past my house, which yeah. is weird to think about. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. If, uh, what is next month? May. May. Yeah, maybe shoot for like June or something, you know? Probably. Yeah. That'd be good. Yeah. So I'll okay. put that in the upcoming meeting part. Oh. Maybe a perk tour in June. And maybe get some of the other county board supervisors interested in it. Yeah, they used Taking to do a, a county mm -hmm. tour. Yeah, they were talking about that at the, I think the last department head meeting was if, if they wanted to get another, get that going again, COVID kind of shut it down because yeah. UW Extension always organized it and UW Extension being state, they weren't allowed to do those kind of meetings or whatever. Mm -hmm. But this year they could, it's just a matter of, they were shopping around for interest on where to go. And I think the last time it was, they always go to one area or another. And the last time it was the Wiwiga area. So they were asking if people had ideas of where to take it and what to do when you're there and logistics wise you know they usually have a meal at the end and so um, if you have suggestions talk to the county clerk um, <laughs> if you have ideas for what might be neat to visit and it, the idea with that is um, they would go past places like we've had that group go past parks and we've had them at the fairgrounds for whenever we had big things happen out there but um, if uh, they also like to see the private businesses, like if there's a new business in your area that's doing something neat or whatever, you know, bring the county board out there and say, you know, like, hey, you know, like this is something neat that's going on. And then they've always tried to focus on places that uh, the county's been able to help in some way or can help in some way, you know, so. If you have ideas, uh, I would say talk to county clerk first and say, hey, what about this, you know, and go from that because uh, they are shopping around looking for ideas right now. I've got one more question, John. <clears throat> Is there any plan on, um, you put a beautiful uh, kayak park, parking lot, park, park area on Highway K in Dayton? Where we have the porta potty, the covered building. But the question is, is the landing area going down to it? It's hard to use because of um, the terrain goes into the water and is rocks and stuff like that. Is there any way that that can be more functional for people actually to get their kayaks in and out of the water in that area? You know, we did attempt that, that. I assume what we we're talking about is sort of the rock steps that go down. You yeah, know, that yeah, was... and they're they're slippery and stuff like that. I mean, it, it's a. Uh, it I think would be used more if people had easier access to the water without having to go through the rocks. Mm -hmm. Did they kind of have a shortcut? worked in there that people were going around the rocks yeah that so there's a real natural spot where people are making their own their own path to the water yeah and you said that that's not a suitable place for a handicap wrap 
I, I know it is hard to get in because I get in at that spot, the kayak. Yeah, it's a, it'd be a little bit of a challenge. I mean, it's a, not saying it can't be done. You know, you could put in, a, and I think we, we looked at those uh, type of fishing or uh, gear thing that has a ramp that goes down. It's an anchored in with, they're basically on the shoreline. If this is the river here on the shoreline, you got these big pillars here and a, a ramp that goes up and down. The water level changes a lot down there, you know. Um, so you need something that's able to float up and down, but then somehow anchored out in the river so it doesn't get washed down the river too. Um, yeah, it's not very wide, but it and, seems to drop off pretty quick. Yeah. But I think, you know, anything that we can do, you've got that, it's a great spot. It's got mm -hmm. bathroom, it's got everything, and people are looking for a spot that it's they can nice. either go up higher and then come down there and park their cars and pick it up. But um, I just think from a utilization standpoint, if, if we can get something that works there for people to get in and out, uh, easier, safer, because... I mean, even if we have to move it over, if there's a better spot, something to look at. Sure. Be great things. We can look into that. That, uh, the, that wrap it up. It's the end of the stuff on the agenda. Okay. And Diane won't let us talk yeah. about anything. <laughs> yep. So our, our next meeting sure. is May 2nd. Um, looking for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Seconded. Okay. Eight and seconded, non-debatable. We are adjourned. Great. All right, that is 1021. Let me turn off this thing.